Good afternoon. Welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist on the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you have a cell phone with you today, please silence it now or turn it off. We do not want to disturb the sacredness of the liturgy. Just a friendly reminder, in the light of the many cautionary directives due to the outbreak of the coronavirus, Bishop Rice has asked us to suspend our greeting at the beginning of Mass. The sign of peace will also be discontinued until further notice. Please remember that you are highly encouraged to wear your face mask during Mass. Our celebrant today is Father Brian Strauss, our associate pastor. As we begin this celebration, let's pray together by singing Tree of Life, found in your bulletin. Tree of life, an awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every morn. Seek that dies to rising glory, may we see ourselves in you. If we learn to live your story, we may die to rise anew. We may die to rise anew. Remember truth once spoken, love passed on through act and word. Every person lost and broken, where's the body of our Lord? Where's the body of our Lord? Gentle Jesus, mighty Spirit, Come and flame our hearts anew. We may all your joys inherit if we bear the cross with you. If we bear the cross with you. Christ you lead and we shall follow, stumbling though our steps may be. One with you in joy and sorrow, we the river, you the sea, we the river, you the sea. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. 
will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. of God the Father. Amen, amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, pour into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter, everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God, at dawn I seek you. For you my soul is thirsting, for you my flesh is pining, like a dry weary land without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. I 
have come before you in the sanctuary to behold your strength and your glory. Your loving mercy is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. My soul is thirsty for you, O Lord my God. I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hand. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. With joyful lips my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. When I remember you upon my bed, I muse on you through the watches of the night. For you have been my strength. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul is thirsting for you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern, discern what is the will of God what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? 
For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good afternoon again, and thank you for joining us at this Mass. Happy to have any guests who are here, people returning to Mass for the first time. Thank you for making Mass a priority, as we do, to uh, be here together. Uh, it's been a busy weekend. As you can tell, we have a lot going on. A few things are a little different in this church, a little more sound equipment and video equipment. Uh, it's because we're hosting these concerts that Tony Melendez is having in our parish this weekend. Uh, you've heard about them. There was one earlier today. There's one right after this Mass at 6.30. And there's one tomorrow at noon, so you can still come out and uh, join us for that or uh, catch it live stream on our Facebook page. Uh, welcome to anybody who's joining us on the live stream today or, or on YouTube later uh, for being in this Mass with us. We, uh, we still need, of course, uh, volunteers to help sanitize the pews after Mass, so please consider giving five minutes of your time to help us do that. The equipment's back there. You know the drill. And thank you so much to everybody who's uh, made that part of uh, our ministry here to, to help us be safe for the the next Mass coming in, because we've got a busy weekend this weekend. It's a very full weekend, uh, you know, and so I and, and the other people who are making this possible are cognizant of the sacrifices it takes to do all this stuff, you know, to, to have five Masses in, our, in a weekend plus three concerts and a meeting and some other stuff as well, and a baptism today, and on and on. You know, these sacrifices we make, that's what I want to talk about today, because that's what St. Paul talks about in the second reading, Letter to the Romans sacrifice. He says, I just love this quote. He says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to the spirit of this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. So I just repeated the entire reading right now, because it's all good, and it's short. So, I mean, in your bulletin, you have it on paper. It's like this big. Tear it out and put it on your bathroom mirror. Or maybe take a photo and make it your lock screen on your phone. Because this is one of those scripture passages that I think is essential. We all got to know this. Know it by heart if you can. I think I know it by heart. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. And on and on. So, to understand what Paul means in this very important passage, what does sacrifice mean? There's a few meanings I can come up with. In general, to sacrifice is to give something good up for a good reason. You know, like a sacrifice bunt. You know, to just, in anything, anything in your life, to give up something good for the sake of something better. Because in our life, we can't just have all convenience and ease. Good things don't come to us without some sort of sacrifice in life. And that could just mean working and saving money. That's a sacrifice. Uh, moving somewhere else and giving things up to be with those you love. That's a kind of a sacrifice. We say there's no such thing as a free lunch. We talk about opportunity costs. We always make sacrifices in order to obtain other things that are better in our, in our eyes. But I don't think that general meaning of sacrifice, that's not exactly what Paul is getting at here. He's talking more about maybe sacrifice in the spiritual sense. Maybe you've ever heard, you've heard of people saying, offer it up. You know, if you... Uh, if a kid is uh, really tired of being in the store with his mom and his mom says, offer it up, you know, that's kind of what spiritual sacrifice is like. So spiritually, somehow, we believe that when we suffer voluntarily, we gain some sort of benefit, or we get closer to Christ who suffered for us. And that's a spiritual sacrifice. That's offer it up. In other words, to kind of use your suffering for somebody else, on behalf of somebody else, to pray. Paul could be talking about this, about spiritual sacrifice. There are many ways that we can make ourselves into a living sacrifice every day, whether we suffer it voluntarily or not. There are many ways we can offer ourselves spiritually as a sacrifice. But the deeper sense of sacrifice is, of course, the sacrifice of Jesus. And today, in this gospel, he speaks to us about sacrifice, about his sacrifice that he will make. To accomplish his mission, to die for us and to be raised, the greatest event in history, Jesus tells us, disciples in this gospel today that he must suffer under the elders and the priests and the scribes. He must be killed, and on the third day he must rise again. And so in light of this, as we hear, St. Peter is shocked. God forbid, Lord, that will never happen. 
Peter, you see, from last week, he's still riding high on Jesus' good news. Remember that Jesus named him the rock? You are Peter. On this rock I will build my church. And he talks about giving him the keys of the kingdom. That was great news. And Peter's still kind of in that, in that mood. But he misses the point of what Jesus is saying. Today, that sacrifice that Jesus is talking about to Peter just sounds like bad news. It sounds very inconvenient to St. Peter that Jesus is going to go suffer and die to suffer under the Pharisees. So, last week, in the previous passage, Jesus said to Peter, you are a rock. And today he calls Peter a different kind of rock. He says, Peter, you are an obstacle to me. Obstacle, the word in Greek, is often translated stumbling block. So last week he was a rock. Now he's Jesus' stumbling block. He says, you are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Because human beings, we spend our time looking for convenience. We spend a lot of attention to minimize our effort, to reduce our suffering in the world. That's how human beings tend to think. But God's plan required a sacrifice. So Jesus presses the point. He says, whoever wants to come with me must take up his cross and follow me. In general, we know good things in life only come by sacrifice. And spiritually, we know sacrifice is the only way to joy and glory. And in Jesus' case, the one big sacrifice that counts is the salvation of the world through his death and resurrection. So when Paul, in this reading, talks or urges us to make our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, there's a lot involved in that. Not just to do inconvenient stuff that's good for us, like general sacrifices, not just spiritual sacrifices to offer it up for others, but to join in that one sacrifice of Jesus that Paul has been talking about through the whole book of Romans, that sacrifice of Jesus. And he makes an interesting comment at that line. He says, make your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. Our spiritual worship. What does he mean by that? In Greek, logike latreia. Latreia means worship. Logike is like logical. It means rational. It means spiritual. It means logike is according to the logos, which is Greek for word. And so logike latreia means worship according to the word. The word who is Jesus. Jesus is the Logos in the New Testament. So all this to say, Paul is telling us, being a living sacrifice is our word worship, our logike latreia, our spiritual worship, our being united to Christ. Now that's very significant for what we know as the highest form of our worship, which of course is the Mass. Our Mass is called many things, banquets and gathering, but preeminently it's called sacrifice. It's called that because the one sacrifice of Christ is present here on this altar. And we participate in that sacrifice. I hope you've heard that before. I know I've said it before. But we need to remember this. So St. Paul says that offering our bodies, in fact, when he says bodies, he says somata, which could also be translated as selves, as person. When we offer our very selves as a living sacrifice to God, that is our logike latreia, our spiritual word-centered worship, And in our worship, we are united to Christ's sacrifice. And so what is sacrifice in the strictly religious meaning? We've looked at sacrifice in general, looked at sacrifice spiritually, but in religion itself, you know, it used to mean ritual sacrifices, like in the Jewish temple. And the letters to the Hebrews talks about this. The ritual sacrifices were just a sign, just a sign of God's love. But Christ offered the one sacrifice that counts once for all. And we participate in it in our Christian worship. Not with the bodies of animals, but in an unbloody way with the body of Christ. That is the sacrifice. Joining with the new religious sacrifice that Jesus offered. And the Eucharist is the presentation of that one sacrifice. So that means if the one, I'm tired of saying this word almost, sacrifice, and you're tired of hearing it. But I'm going to continue. If that means that if the one eternal sacrifice of Christ is made present here, and if our greatest glory and worship is to make ourselves into a living sacrifice, then participation in the sacrifice of the Mass is the best thing that we can do. To unite ourselves to this sacrifice that Jesus made present. That's why Paul says, do not conform yourselves to the spirit of this age. This age meaning not, you know, in the 100s AD, before that when he wrote this letter, this age meaning the age of the world that we are in and that Paul was in, that all Christians live in. The age around us. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. 
The liturgical movement knew that. What I mean is, in the early 1900s, there were some Catholic theologians in the church. They looked at the modern world around them in the early 1900s, 100 years ago, and they saw things like World War I. They saw revolutions and dictators and suffering. They saw poverty and corruption. They saw materialism and atheism. And it's starting to sound a little familiar, maybe. But 100 years ago, they saw all this, and they thought, if the Mass is the sacrifice of Jesus among us, the greatest prayer in the world, then if we learn to truly participate in it with our whole selves, we can renew the world. God's grace will come alive in us. And so these theologians, they looked at the Catholics and the churches around them, and they saw people who didn't know how to participate in the Mass, the sacrifice. Most Catholics in those days, they just prayed the rosary the whole time they were in the pews. Or they would read a prayer book. Or they just waited until it was time to receive communion, and they'd receive communion instead of praying the Mass. And so that's how the liturgical movement was born. These theologians who wanted to teach people, even in the days long before the Mass was translated into English, when it was still in Latin, they worked to enable people to understand and participate in the liturgy itself. So when we participate in the Mass, of course we know it's more than just the externals. It's more than saying the responses and singing the hymns. All of that is for the sake of our whole self understanding and participating in the sacrifice that Christ offers, that he offered once for all and that he offers here again, represented to us. So we come to offer this sacrifice through him and with him and in him, through Jesus, with Jesus, and in Jesus. You see, I as the priest, I stand there as the representative of Christ the high priest offering the sacrifice. The gifts, the bread and wine, which are offered and transformed, they become the sacrifice Jesus of Jesus himself. They become Jesus, offered to the Father. And the congregation, all of us, the body of Christ, we are joined with that act of Jesus. And so all of us participate through him, with him, and in him. The sacrifice of this altar is the very same sacrifice on Calvary that he made for us, but it's given to the church today. It's united with our own sacrifices from our lives, each one of us. And that's what enables each of us to offer our whole lives as a living sacrifice to God. That's active participation in the liturgy, and the liturgical movement was right. It can change the world. And it's even in the text of the Mass. If you look at the Eucharistic prayers, Eucharistic prayer 4 says these words, Look, Lord, on the sacrifice you yourself have provided for your church. Grant that we may become a living sacrifice to the praise of your glory. And Eucharistic prayer 3, I'm sure you've heard a lot, these words, Lord, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor upon the oblation offering of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile the world to yourself. When God looks on our offering on this altar, he sees Jesus, the sacrifice. So the Mass is our spiritual, rational, word-centered worship because we are body and soul. Humanity united with a spark of divine life through our baptism. And the Mass is the ultimate union of the human and the divine. So what every one of us offers here on this altar today is lifted up, united with Christ's sacrifice, transformed, and then given back to us. So do you want to be a good Christian to others in your life? It starts here. It starts with offering ourselves to be transformed. We can't give what we don't have. And so Paul says, I urge, I urge you to offer your body as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. There are many ways to do this in life that you can imagine, but it begins and it comes back to this great act of worship in the liturgy. Paul says, do not be conformed to the spirit of this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So to always pursue convenience over truth and effort is to hear Jesus say to us, you are an obstacle to me. You're thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. We can't pursue convenience over truth. Even here in this Mass today, don't judge God and his mysteries by your own lens, by your own preferences, by your own presumption, because God is the measure of everything. So if you and I are really able to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice united to Jesus here in this Mass, everything can change. Our lives can be lifted up and transformed. And that requires renewal of our mind, not conforming to the age around us. Only if you, we are united with Christ totally today in our words, in our actions, 
in our thoughts, in our intentions, in our attention. Only if we are united with him in that way, that in a real way today, you and I can live these words of his. Whoever wishes to lose his life for my sake will find it. Brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith together. I believe in one God, Father, maker of heaven, of all. I believe in Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, for all ages, God from God, life from God, God the Son, consubstantial with the Father, for him all. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, he rose again on the third day, according to the He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again again to judge the kingdom of heaven. I will give him the spirit, giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, who has spoken from the prophet. I will leave him the Catholic and Catholic. I confess my baptism. I look forward to the resurrection of the life of the world. Seeking God's help for our need, those of all his children, let us offer him our petition. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, that by their example we may learn to take up our cross and follow Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of all nations, may they work together to build a future of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who labor, may they receive the just and living wage, and for the unemployed, may they find work that satisfies mind and heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those affected by Hurricane Laura, may they find comfort in God's love and be blessed with grace and strength as they work to rebuild homes and communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our candidates, as they prepare for confirmation in September, may they be strengthened through the prayers and encouragement of our parish community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful who are not able to join us at Mass, May their intentions be lifted up at this altar today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they be welcomed by God into the eternal joy of heaven, especially Antonio Trejo Patino, the father of Antonio Trejo. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray for Dale Colby, for whom this Mass is offered, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, hear our prayers, and grant us the grace we need to lead lives which are holy and pleasing to you. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, and the work of your hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Dead, 
He destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the firstfruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father Most High, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from corrupt, the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us not be Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. sins of the world have mercy on us have mercy on us Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace, grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. sanctuary, pure and holy, bright and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be 
be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. death of the Lord deep in our hearts. Living now we remain with Jesus the Christ. Once we were people afraid, lost in the night. Then by your cross we were saved. Dead became living, life from your giving. We hold the death of the Lord deep in our hearts. Living now we remain with Jesus the Christ. Something which we have known, something we've touched, what we have seen with our eyes, this we have heard life-giving word. We hold the death of the Lord deep in our hearts. Living now we remain with Jesus the Christ. He chose to give of himself became our bread broken that we might live love beyond love pain for our pain we hold the death of the Lord deep in our hearts us the Christ. We are the presence of God. This is our call. Now to become bread and wine, food for the hungry, life for the weary, to live with the Lord, we must die with the Lord. We hold the death of the Lord deep in our hearts. Living now we remain with Jesus the Christ.
let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Well, thank you again for being part of this Holy Mass and participating in the Lord's sacrifice. And I have a couple of brief announcements for you. We haven't had a lot of, a lot of announcements recently. Uh, but first of all, because of, uh, like many things, because of the pandemic, we weren't able to participate in the mission co-op appeal. We would normally get a missionary priest to come and tell us about his work uh, to uh, encourage us to help him out. But we still can help them out. Our charity this year is the Indian Missionary Society. Um, that's what our parish is assigned to help. So if you could uh, donate by giving your gift to the parish office or using Faith Direct, um, please help them out. It's very important for us to uh, help in missionary efforts to those who are less fortunate than us. Um, if you put it in an envelope marked for that purpose, you can also put it in the, in the collection basket. Um, then we also have a, an important meeting tomorrow for any confirmation, well, any high school students who have not received confirmation who need to enter into preparation. Um, we ask that student and a parent to come to our meeting tomorrow here at 4.30 p.m. Uh, where we can uh, talk about what that will look like for the next year, preparing for confirmation for the spring. So that's an important step, and uh, don't miss that if, if you know someone who needs that. And then finally, like I said, um, please join us to uh, be with Tony Melendez. Uh, after this Mass at 6.30, go get a bite to eat real quick and come back, or tomorrow at noon. And uh, we'd be happy to uh, rejoice with you all to be with Tony together. And for all of you, I wish you a blessed rest of your weekend. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till come the world adore His sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our Savior trod, our King victorious, Christ the Son of God. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore His sacred name. Led on the way by this triumphant sign, the hosts of God in conquering rings combine. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore. Sacred.